For more on this, uh, we're now joined by political analyst Seisman Mutlu and he joins us via our video link. Seisman, thank you so much uh, for your time. Of course, uh, we've seen some of the legal experts there, you know, saying that uh, uh, the likelihood of the ANC winning uh, this latest uh, court bid at the Constitutional Court is highly unlikely. Do you think that uh, this is just delaying tactics uh, from the ANC side now taking this matter to the Constitutional Court after the Supreme Court of Appeal denied it uh, the appeal? Yeah, definitely. I think currently how the ANC started to appeal to the High Court and now it's leading to the uh, uh, Constitutional Court. It, it is one of those ways that it's trying to avoid releasing the documents. But as other uh, analysts have said, it doesn't look like the NC is going to win this debate. It, it is better for them to basically release the reports or the minutes. And, 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 and then we could see what the Democratic Alliance really intends to do with the with that kind of information they have so it is that moment i think uh, uh, one could even call it a judgment of this policy particularly when people have really been ridiculing it criticizing it in, in terms of how unfair it is and how it has affected negatively the quality of governance mm. You know, the information in those documents is quite uh, crucial, especially for the ANC, because, I mean, political parties in South Africa are heading to the 2024 elections. Uh, should, uh, you know, these documents be handed over, you know, to the DA, the likelihood of the DA using it, uh, you know, for campaigning is highly likely. So did we expect the ANC to take this route? You know, at first I was thinking the NC would want to ask for an extension from the court and, and say they have to compile the reports, compile the minutes and before they hand them over. But uh, for how they were to appeal, I really found it strange because there isn't really any ground for them to justify not releasing their, their reports or the minutes. And then and how the Democratic Alliance is going to use this information. I don't see how they will do that creatively because the public sentiment is already there that people understand that ANC has had some preference given to its members or to its patrons, even in, in terms of works. People have always understood if there's a job opportunity at the municipality, one should have had some close relationship with the ANC for them to get that opportunity. It will not be a, something that is strange in the public maybe the depth of the rot, the depth of the collusion in terms of deployment will be something interesting to see. Mm. How dabbing, uh, you know, would uh, these records be, especially for President Cyril Ramaphosa, because at the time he was the chairperson of the ANC's uh, deployment committee. Surely it will be quite damning for him. I think people already have criticized President Ramaphosa. We understood he was also in the war room for load shedding or to mitigate the impact of load shedding. There hasn't been any accountability on him for that. The NC works according to this principle of collective responsibility or collective accountability. They are not those that will isolate one member. And therefore, this will not have any negative impact on Mr. Ramaphosa himself. This is something that will be uh, borne by the ANC, the organization. It will not really bear, bear on, on Mr. Ramaphosa. Mm. At the same time, Seisman, I mean, a lot of people are also criticizing, especially when, uh, you know, this uh, matter was first heard in the High Court in Pretoria. You know, you heard it even from uh, people in the ANC saying that, well, you know, as much as we are being criticized uh, for a CADA deployment policy, even the DA has a CADA deployment policy. What do you have to say about that, about uh, political parties uh, taking each other to court for some of the same policies that they also have within their own political party? That is correct in part. We understand that when we talk about CADA deployment traditionally, it is about a political party sending its trusted 
people in executive positions, say a minister, director general. But when this practice will be implemented, even uh, when it comes to a state-owned entity where you would employ a mutlong who is not qualified, mm -hmm. who is not really used to that kind of an organization over somebody who is non-partisan, it becomes uh, wrong. For me, it even becomes worse if we could have an understanding that the NC has said and decided on a particular judge, a particular magistrate, and they have closed opportunities for very talented judges or anyone in the public service. That will be something that will be uh, disappointing in terms of how the NC has managed this policy. Mm, and of course, I mean, Justice Zondo uh, at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, well, Chief Justice Zondo now, at the State Capture Commission of Inquiry, in his report, clearly saying there that the cadre deployment policy of the ANC is unconstitutional and it's invalid. Uh, clearly, when it comes to how the ANC implemented uh, its cadre deployment uh, policy, uh, that's where the problem is here. Definitely. You will also remember Mr. Zuma also tried to play around this process of deployment with uh, Justice Zondo, Zondo to say, you've been, you and I have been talking and we also have commented about your future in the judiciary. Therefore, you are conflicted as, as a, a commissioner. So it is very understandable that most of the people who might be at some executive uh, offices have had some uh, linkages or some relations with the NC. We, we have also seen this with uh, the uh, an incoming uh, a public protector mm -hmm. who also has worked closely with politicians, even though she also had said that her membership has lapsed of, I think, a decade now. But there is that perception that one is nobody emerging from a township or some rural space and become somebody prominent in the public sector unless they have had touches with the ANC. It is very important to understand how this works and what the Chief Justice has said. I think it was that element of unlocking the capture because for one to capture the state institutions, they have to work from the premise and the foundation of a political party. Therefore, that judgment was very instrumental to mm -hmm. trying to change the institutional alignment where a governing party dominates deployment in state institutions, when these state institutions should be open based on merit and available for anyone and everyone in society to occupy. All right, uh, Seisman, thank you so much uh, for your time here in the late edition. That is Seisman Mutlung, political analyst, uh, just giving us his insight there when it comes uh, to the ANC now taking the issue of uh, its cadre deployment policy to the Constitutional Court.